So thank you all for coming. And thanks to Nate, one of our regular uh, members here, who's going to talk to us about uh, container support in Slurm. So over to you, Nate. Okay, hopefully they'll be quiet now. <laughs> I have a neighbor with like a small wiener dog and they really want to go and lick it. So whenever the neighbor walks it, they just bark the little heads off. Yeah, I think you can go ahead, Nathan. Oh, okay. Yep. All right, let's see. Hello. I don't know if anyone knows me, but uh, I'm Nate. I work for SkedMD. We're the guys behind Slurm. Uh, today, I'm going to present to you some container support stuff that we just were adding in the upcoming 2302 release. So that's just in March. Everything here uh, I am presenting actually exists. I'm not just waving my hands. And if I have time, I'll even do a live presentation afterwards. All right, a uh, quick rundown of what I'm going to talk about. I'll skip that here. So, um, I mean, I think everybody here knows this. Everybody likes Docker. They want to be able to use it. Lots of users really like it. Uh, there's lots of problems with Docker, but we're not going to worry about that for this presentation. Um, one of the things that I've been asked for a lot is users just want to be able to use Docker. Um, and so this is the way that... Uh, our first real good attempt at actually getting Docker to work natively with Slurm and by extension Podman and uh, possibly some love for Kubernetes later. Uh, first thing was we had to add support for OCI containers. Uh, we did that last release. Uh, it runs, it works, uses all the existing uh, controls. It's not very user-friendly, never was really intended to be but the support was required. And now with our upcoming release, uh, we're adding something I like to call a OCI runtime proxy, which I'll explain in a few minutes, but more or less it allows us to bolt in Slurm into Docker. Uh, so this is the container support that we got added. Um, I don't think it's too relevant for this thing. I just have it here for reference. Containers are now first class citizen in Slurm. Uh, these examples just running against some container that you have in tempfs. Uh, this is the current way jobs are run in Slurm. The user logs in usually via SSH into a login node, and then they call one of the commands to start the jobs. The job runs on a compute node. Um, this is the way it's been for Oh, geez, 20 years. And Slurm's model is the continuation of existing models, which are all the way from the 40s. Or, sorry, 50s. Um, tried and true. Works great. Uh, new model uh, that we're adding now is user will log into a login node via SSH or whatever. Uh, but instead, they will interact directly with Podman or Docker. Then Podman or Docker will call our new command, which we're ever so hilariously calling SC run. Um, and then SC run will do all the magic that requires to get Slurm to work. And to the user, it'll look like they're just working with uh, Docker directly, but in reality, their job will be running on a compute node. Um, and following the previous model for the job itself. And you know, the expectation is there'll be container or like an artifact or something like that where they pull their images from and everything they need. And in this case, uh, swapping out Kubernetes there for Docker is definitely a possibility because everything works by standard, which is really nice. Uh, definitely not perfect, which is one of the things. So for instance, uh, we're, I'm only prom uh, we're only giving documentation for Docker Podman. But since this is the uh, research group, I also, you know, we'll look at Kubernetes. Definitely not something I'm promising anytime soon. At least not for this release. Uh, 
So I'd call it a runtime proxy. I assume everybody here is familiar with what an OCI runtime is. Um, in this case, all this functionality pre exists in Slurm one way or another. It's just not very cleanly set up for containers. So it's the game of a thousand small edits all over the place to get it to work. Um, my entire goal here is to make it completely boring for users. I want the user to be able to call Docker as they would call it on their laptop and have it work as they would expect. Um, and like all things in computing, there's a cost to this, which means the system administrator is going to have to do a little bit of extra work to make sure that the container images can be pushed around and the default config is what they want. So maybe having a specific queue that they send all their jobs to that are containers. In most cases, I assume most containers will be, you know, a single core or something like that, something simple. But it's definitely configurable. And then you continue to use all the existing stuff that Slurm has. Uh, one of the big gotchas here is when Docker runs, or Podman runs for that matter, it sets up a mount namespace where it mounts everything, usually with overlay fest, depending on how you configure it. Um, and that mount namespace has to be copied out or somehow exported to the compute node. And it only exists in that specific uh, namespace. So that's why we have something called staging in and out of the image. It's done via script, which I will talk about in a minute. Um, the whole idea here is users be able to just use existing HPC resources and Docker now or Podman. Podman tends to be a little bit friendlier on the HPC boxes. Um, so here's the first example. Uh, and I will note here that this is only rootless Docker. Rootful Docker is a uh, absolutely unacceptable security risk on almost every HPC system. Um, that's not just like a per user host uh, cloud hosted system. Uh, so here, the first line is you're exporting the Docker rootless um, control. Just telling Docker, hey, talk to rootless instead of trying to talk to the system Docker. Uh, the rootful Docker. And then the second part is Docker, unlike Podman, requires that you pass um, security settings directly over the command line. You can't just configure it out, or at least not a way that I've been able to find. And I have been searching the source code for it. Uh, in this case, all the security features don't make any sense because you're not actually running the container on the login node. So we just need to turn them all off. So uh, no advanced networking stuff supported yet, so we just turn that off. App Armor and SE Linux and um, the security uh, containment, whatever, all that just needs to get disabled because it doesn't even apply because you're not running on the node you're actually running on. It's all headed by Slurm anyway on the compute nodes. So I just made a quick little export here to make it explicit, um, and you just turn all of it off. I really wish there was an easier way to do this, and I might end up sending some batches in. I don't know. Uh, first command is you're just calling docker run, all the normal things. Hey, I want to run Ubuntu, and just verify the release. And the second one is same thing, but with CentOS. Just proof of uh, that it works. You guys feel free to uh, ask questions at any time. I didn't mean this to be too formal. Um, so here's all the processes that will actually end up happening in the run. So the user logs in via SSH, whatever. Rootless kit is running Docker, which is running container D, which is running the shim. And the shim is calling SC run, which is our OCI runtime proxy. And it handles the uh, work of calling out the slurm and initiating the job and all the other things. And then slurm D which is basically, which is close what Slurm, it's basically the kubelet for uh, Slurm is running on the compute node and it's actually calling C run or run C, whichever OCI runtime you want. That's definitely configurable. So there's a lot of extra um, processes involved in this, but to the user, it shouldn't be visible. It should just work as expected. 
Um, and most of these processes don't actually do much, so it doesn't slow down anything. At the end of the day, the user is actually communicating directly with S run, and container D doesn't actually have to do much. A uh, quick example of the config that's required to activate this. Uh, I do disable everything I can that I don't want in the config that they let you do it. Um, and then even activate no new privileges, because why not? The more the security, the better. And in this case, the most important part is new runtime, just call SC run, which is the new binary provided by Slurm, which is the OCI runtime proxy. Uh, same thing for Podman, although Podman actually has configuration choices that disable all the extra security stuff, which is really nice. So in this case, normal Podman command, I want to run Ubuntu, I'm gonna run CentOS, and then just for verification, uh, I'm just having it print the Slurm job environment ID so that you know that you're actually running it as a job each time you call it. And for people who aren't familiar with Slurm, every time you run a job, it gets a new job ID number. Uh, in this case, just verifying that. Podman's a little simpler. Uh, it just has Podman, which calls Codman, and Conman calls SC run. Um, not too fundamentally different, a little less abstraction. Uh, and the config for Podman is simpler than Docker. Uh, you can just disable all those extra security things. Say, I just want to run the host for everything because it's not running on the logger node. Your job is actually running all the way on a compute node somewhere far away. And just telling it, hey, use SC run. And I assume you guys can see my mouse. Yeah, it looks like you can. Yeah, we can see your mouse just fine. Okay. So uh, one of the gotchas is container staging. I mentioned this a little earlier. Uh, when SC run starts, it's actually run inside of the user namespace, mount namespace. It's its job to get that image and push it out to the compute node via whatever means is most efficient. Now, since every single HPC system I've ever gotten my hands on or seen is different, File systems are different. Storage locations are different. Um, this has to be really customizable. So in Slurm, it's done via a plugin, which calls Lua script, so that a sysadmin can do whatever they need. Um, I expect this will actually have different differences between different uh, hardware types on certain clusters, especially for the cloud bursting ones. Um, There'll even need to be some calculations of paying e egress and ingress fees, I imagine. So there's just a Lua script. Uh, Lua tends to be super friendly to SS admins. I mean, if you don't like it, you can just call exec out to whatever script or code you want. It doesn't really matter. Um, nice thing about Lua is it has built-in JSON support, so you can edit and look at the... Um, images, spec, file, and all the other fun things, and they uh, change it as you please. Uh, and then there's callbacks inside of the Lua thing to tell Slurm what you have done. Like, hey, this uh, image was here, but now it's over here on the shared file system or on this S3 bucket, whatever's required. Here's a incredibly simplified example. Um, in this case, I'm just calling rsync and pushing out the image uh, root to a shared file system. And then I'm telling Slurm, hey, the bundle is now here, and the new root path is here. Um, and it modifies the config file, too. Very simplified. Uh, you can look at our documentation later for the full one, but yeah, I hope this gets the idea across. And then in the case of my example, uh, when it's done with the job, it just deletes all of it on the remote file system. Um, for sites that have lots of rules or stuff like that, or reproducibility requirements, they can always just send this stuff off the tape or something like that, or just release the S3 buckets directly, something fun like that, or unmount if you use file systems. Uh, there are lots of limitations involved with this, and I've been glancing them over. 
Uh, for instance, we don't support any kind of network namespaces. It's only host for now. And in most, in most supercomputers, that's what it's probably going to be forever because uh, RDMA drivers and other things like that don't play nice with uh, namespaces or C groups. Although there has been some efforts in the um, InfiniBand area to make that uh, play nice. But it's not covered for now. Um, stuff like C groups, RPOM, or SE Linux support on the login host don't actually make any sense because you're not running the job there. So we just disable all that. Um, finding out where things fail can be difficult. I'm still working on that, but there's lots of places where logs can happen. I mean, every single daemon has its own logging and you have to be able to look at all those depending on when things fail. Uh, I have found mostly once you get it working, it tends to be pretty rock stable or <laughs> rock hard. <laughs> Um, uh, minor details, you got to make sure you compile things in the right order. Uh, Swarm has lots of customiz customization for sites. Um, something called CLF filter and spank uh, plugins that let sysadmins insert plugins that modify user requests at certain locations. Really giving the admin lots of power to control these things because in a lot of cases, users are not basically power users, but it's definitely configurable. And if it's not done anything, then the user can do as they please. Uh, authentication, we currently only support the Manjoth. Um, there's a lots of uh, work done in the background to make sure that the user namespaces are translated correctly, which is currently only possible via Munge, but future releases, um, JSON web tokens and stuff like open off, uh, OAuth can be set up to work. It just hasn't been done. Um, anybody have any questions? These are just minor technical limitations. I just wanted to list out in case people have questions. I mean, I, I have a couple of questions, but maybe, maybe I don't know how much more you have. It's, it's a bit of an... Uh... A question of understanding if I, if I got that right. So, I mean, first of all, I think this is um, really cool. Um, oh, now we have questions officially. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry. Um, so, so the, 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 the socket, like the, um, the Docker socket and so on, they are not available on the login nodes, but they are um, only uh, available on, on the um, compute nodes. So, the, like the Stern cluster, is that um, correct? Like, uh, no, actually, Docker runs on the login nodes. Yeah. Let me go find that. But, but it mounts the socket from the from the like uh, batch node. No, Docker doesn't have anything to do with it um, because Slurm has the native container support. Slurm's okay. talking directly to the OCI runtime, so either C run, run C, whatever you want. Uh, where is that little graph I had? Um, so yeah, so Docker will run here. Docker socket will be here. Mm -hmm. The job won't have that access to that because it's running on some compute node off in the cluster, potentially being burst out in the cloud somewhere. Um, but um, once the job is over there and running, it can talk to Slurm directly or it can talk to its own container runtime. And the container runtime has proper interface with the Slurm because Slurm knows the relatively simple config and state for it. Okay. Okay. But in so, principle, yeah. Okay. I mean, uh, it doesn't currently have the like the Kubernetes thing where you can talk to itself and change the job around. Mm -hmm. um, outside of the existing Slurm stuff, I mean, Slurm has all that functionality, but it's not specific to containers. But anybody can change around their job as they please. Mm -hmm. Okay, and the and the main use case would would, would be interactive um, work with a container because i mean if, if you wanted to use container workloads then you could use the the native um, slurm container support right and just submit your drops um, like if you want to ha have like a massive uh, batch um, parallel drops um, and and, and yes. but, but this 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 implementation here the, the point here is really to enable people to um, you know interactively work with this uh, interactively and then um, even though my example is really simple uh, once the image is made 
the user can probably have some kind of an option to push it out to a common location and then submit large amounts of batch jobs to do production uh, batch work. Mm -hmm. I mean, the whole idea is to let Docker or Podman or whatever you want to generate your containers and have them run or be prepared in the way that users would expect, same way as their laptop or work machine, uh, workstation. And then you can run the jobs as you please. Yeah, no, I think that's great. And maybe one one last question. Um, I mean, what are the like system requirements? I, the, we're still running quite a lot of, let's say, um, you know, Red Hat or CentOS um, seven um, uh, systems. Um, is, are there any in particular for since, since you have like rootless? I mean, does that require like a CentOS um, eight or, or I mean, what, what, do you have an idea what's like the minimum requirement for that? Um, so this is the fun part. Uh, on the login node, I would suggest running the latest because Rootless Docker has been doing massive amounts of development and improvements, and it just tends to work better on CentOS uh, 9 or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. But that being said, the compute nodes, Run C has been rock solid stable for a few years now. So if you're running CentOS 7 and you want to run the job there on the compute nodes, I'll be fine. And doing heterogeneous clusters is... Um, been working for years. So you could have the login node be, you know, current uh, revision of CentOS and then have compute nodes be something old that's stable. Uh, you do need to have user namespace support. So Red Hat 6 and has CentOS 6 doesn't work. That's just the kernel, kernel limitation. There's nothing we can do about that. But besides that, if you have user namespace support, it mm -hmm. should more or less work in your kernel. Um, if it's in your kernel, then it should more or less work. Run C is actually really simple, so it works pretty nicely. Okay, yeah, very cool. I mean, maybe I'll stop in case like other people have questions. No, I'm I'm here for a question and answer. Um, I guess this is a better example of a rootless Docker. Yep. I mean, at the end of the day, it's running under C run or Run C, whatever uh, runtime you want to use, or even Singularity or Charlie Cloud. Yeah, on that uh, one. With, ask like what where what is the life cycle of the container again so you you prepare the container on the login node if i understand correctly like you do maybe potman pull on the on the yep. um, on the login node right but then the configuration based on what the compute node needs is also done in slurm uh, like in in potman or singularity or saros they use specific configuration that is done on the compute node like oci hooks or plugins in podman to maybe specialize the container and then tweak the container to use the right mpi or use the right gpu libraries and so on is um, this done in so funny about mode? that is you can actually just activate that stuff um for, for instance you could act well saras calci run eventually um the new command so it's sc run it has all the same semantics uh, as s alloc and it has its entire set of environment variables that you can set up the same way um so you can modify the job to be 100 nodes 10 nodes whatever you want all but that's the, there the, the creation of the container like the the docker create or saros like the life cycle management of the container is it done on the compute node or on the on the head node because if you configure Saros on a specific uh, compute node, then your Saros run will be, the lifecycle hooks will be executed on the compute node. And it sounds like you are not using Saros on the compute node, you're just using C run on the compute nodes. Yes. Um, so there's this adds several steps to it. So yes, um, all the hooks will be run by Docker. Doc will maintain the image as you please, unless you decide to copy it out. Um, and then you can have the hooks that C run calls also. But C run doesn't call any hooks, right? Um, most of the oh, time, but they actually are there and they do work. Um, for some of them, the Docker thing, you actually have to disable a few of them. All right, it's possible. Okay. Um, but yeah, they're actually called on both sides. Okay, interesting. Yeah, interesting to see a, a live demo on it. Um, I think that's. Sure. Cool. Let me go uh, get it going. See if I can actually share my screen. One sec.
Okay. Now, hopefully, I didn't break this in between yesterday when I prepared it. But, you know, it's the way of live demos. Let me get it shared. No. Okay, can everybody see this? Yep. All right. Um, now, naturally, I have uh, conveniently removed any of the errors and other stuff in the uh, presentation. So right here, I just called uh, Podmad Run. Um, and I did break it a little. And, uh, Uh, so, I have all the debug activating here, too. So, here, I'm just a normal user on the cluster. I'm calling Ubuntu run, or a Podman run Ubuntu. I'm just telling it uptime. Um, these are the authentication workarounds I have active. That's going to be fixed before uh, March. Um, there's a whole bunch of uh, movement in and out of the namespaces that I have to account for. Slurm was written before all this stuff existed. So uh, it's requiring a good bit of uh, effort to get Slurm to play nice with them. And then here's some more logging. Um, I can explain it later, but uh, the expectation with an OCI runtime is that you have a process that runs um, that Docker or Podman uh, communicate against. So in this case, we make one, we, and I just call it Anchor. And it gets split off, and then it starts doing all the effort. And then eventually, at some point, S run is called. And it has the container location. Uh, and it'll know where. So that's the container location. That's where it's been pushed to by the Lua script. Um, and then the container ID, which is handed to us by Docker. And then the job runs. Uh, just on well uptime. I mean, if you want me to call a different command, that's cool too. Um, and we're just going to ignore these errors for the terminal stuff for the time being. Uh, definitely some interesting issues with the movement of um, the terminal permissions. Just some minor bugs to fix. And then it does the stage out, and in which case, it's just deleting it. I mean, let's see. OS release. So it goes faster. And of course, it runs slow for some reason. Probably doing some compiling in the background or something. Um, reference here. Whoops. I killed it off. Um, this, I'm running it on CentOS. So this is uh, Alma Linux 8.6, and I'm calling Ubuntu. And let me go check, make sure I don't have a cluster full of other jobs or something funny like that. Oh, that's it. OK. It's just being slow for some reason. Uh, this is a problem of active development. <laughs> but I hope it gets the idea across. For the user, they'll just see the normal um, Podman commands or Docker ones. Honestly, I, I would expect most sites to do Podman just because it's a whole lot less of a pain for them than Docker or Ritless Docker. But you know, they both work. Uh, my example here only has Podman set up because... Uh, it was just simpler because this is actually a Docker cluster. So, uh, I can compose. Uh, whoops. So, this is a Docker based cluster inside a compose, and it's actually doing that. So, there's multiple levels of uh, namespaces used here. Um, doing Docker inside Docker is a pain in the butt because I have to actually move around a whole bunch of the mounts, so I'm not exposing that right now, which I assume you know all about, Christian. <laughs> oh, less, yeah. Yeah, um, I can get it to work. I have made it, but the Podman one tends to be the easiest, and I don't know why it's hanging. 
Um, and all the normal things. So I just hit Control C to cancel it out, and it sends the signals as expected. Uh, let me see if uptime works. Maybe I did something funky there. Um, yeah, uptime works, so I must have did something odd. Definitely it's not completely ready, but it does work. Um, I might have had the interactive thing. There's some weird issues with uh, TTY controls, but I'm working those out. Most of it involves just having to turn off a whole bunch of the features because we just don't need them or use them. Hey Nate, I'm curious about one thing. Uh, for the for running the container uh, with a resources request, and usually I've seen you create some kind of slurm scripts. Does this work well with Docker, like with this SC run or? Um, yeah, if you wanted to, you could do. Uh, let me see if I have a queue native for this thing. Uh, I'd have to add the login node as a partition. I can do pretty quick. But then once you do that, you could just do S batch. So it's only along these lines. Uh, login. So I'll just tell it to run a login node and then something fun like that. You know, that's what you wanted to do. It's not going to work because I don't have it set up for that right now, but that's definitely something that should work. And then I guess it'd be a little, I guess. Confu I mean, I guess I wonder what the overhead would be for like the containers, like requirements for the CPU or memory versus what SBATCH requires. Like, I don't know if those are quite one to one, right? Um, it's going to be a little extra, but if you're just running on the login node, it's the same price as the user calling it. I mean, there shouldn't be much of anything. I mean, most of it is idle the second that so. Most of the work done by Docker is done when it's creating the image, mounting it all up, and then staging it out to the login node. And then it's idle until the job's done. Um, it's just moving the IO back and forth. Um, Got it. Okay. Uh, I'm pod man, I'm log. Oh. All right. Well, thank you. Uh, give me a second. And then the existing stuff, you know, Podman's log should work. I mean, you're just paying the price for having Podman or Docker do the log movement and then storing it somewhere. Uh, Slurm does the direct writing of the JSON log files. So hopefully that's not going to result in too much um, overhead. I mean, unless the logs a lot. <laughs> but in which case, you can always just tell Slurm to log it to a different file and not have it go through Docker. Maybe ask another question. So if you if you were to do something like Podman uh, images um, to list them, so because I mean you need to have them on, on like a shared file system. Would you see your own uh, images only, or everyone's uh, images at that point? Because I mean you made some comment about um, like you know, what what is run in as, as a user and what isn't. Um, Podman here is running as a user. It's okay. all specific to the user, and yes, that is a possibility. But that's actually outside of Slurm. I mean, you can configure Docker or Podman as you please. Mm -hmm. uh, Slurm only becomes involved the second it calls SC run, and then Slurm is going to push the image back and forth to the compute nodes as needed. Uh, and yeah, you can do all the fun Docker um, caching if you want. You know, I'd expect any large site to have their own internal cache that they control and bless certain images and whatnot. Although there are, you know, more open sites out there that could just let you pull from Docker Hub as you please. That's definitely up to the site to decide. It's nothing that I, that we're going to apply limitations on. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I mean, so at some point you showed that, that it's pushing the, the, the um, like, the, I guess the extracted image, um, like, I mean, you have it yeah. here, it's like serve containers, thread something. Um, so d d does this also, like, if you were to submit similar containers, uh, does it then do any deed applications? Is, is this like the common shared file system for, for the, um, like, for the uh, unpacked images or? Yeah, uh, that doesn't exist yet. Right now, it's just a simple push of, you know, coin R sync. Um, okay. deduplication is something I definitely like to look into in the future, but it's not something we do right now. Mm -hmm. That will be.
question as well along these lines that you so you you have the images you, you show Portman images right and and to create the image this is unpacked or is loop mounted on on a specific part then you pass to uh, to the compute node but usually what what I see is that Portman creates images by everyone on a shared file system and then just loop mounted on the on the compute node because some compute nodes don't have storage right so local storage so you want yeah. to just loop mount those yeah um for everybody it's different um that's why i'm giving as much flexibility as possible i mean uh here i'll show you the um right, oops. i gotta leave the user to modify it so let's see um should not it's too hard to to not copy over the the root file system of the compute node, but just loop mount the image on the compute node instead. Like yeah, you could do something along those lines. This is the simplest version uh, that uh, you know I set up with is just calling our sync. Mm, uh, okay, but you could definitely do a mount. Um, yeah, I'm accounting okay. for all these things because I mean I have sites that have really fast local file systems fast luster file system gpfs stuff like that so i want to be able to make it work for them and then we have sites with the alter slow egress and ingress of pushing the images out to the cloud um yeah. i mean and i'm giving as many options here i mean future work could definitely go to uh making that faster and deduplication stuff along those lines yeah so the this slurm stage in allocator would be the magic to or the place yep. to make magic work in different ways. Um, yeah, I mean, I'd hope most sites could just use our sync, but definitely configurable. Like, this is the actual thing that's being called for what I'm the demo that I'm doing right now. Um, it's extracting out of the environment who's running. Uh, it's I have served containers as the shared file system that's pushed out to everybody, which is just a really simple volume that I have mounted everywhere uh, for and, this demo. And right. go on again. The life cycle like maybe mapping in a gpu is it also a, a callback or like a function that you you can prepare to make it work for different compute nodes if you have like two queues one with gpus one without oh. um so if you, you want to switch between what you're calling let me go back to fred my hilarious test user you just be passing it as the environment um to the container so let's see Actually, I don't remember how to do it in Podman. Give me one second. But um, when Slurm is called, so SC run, the environment that exists there at the time of, um, you can uh, set any environment variable and Slurm will read it and process it just as normal. So if you do uh, along the line of export, uh, let me just go find the command for you. The docs aren't written yet, but um, the same. All the same environment variables for salloc will exist for this too. So uh, node. So you could do something like this uh, inside of the job. I don't remember what Podman does to export environment. And yeah, we'll have to document this better. So one of the things that we are hitting is that um, you can't do something as simple as this. And this is a limitation of Docker and Podman. So what I really would like is to be able to do this, but the actual calling environment uh, oops, doesn't get passed by Podman or Docker. I think it might actually get passed by Podman. Um, but the expectation is I will we will be getting the environment so you can export it Oh, it's not nice, Alec. Yeah, I would expect this to be like configured on the host, and then you don't need to pass anything. It's just depending on where you're. Oh yeah, yeah. So um, the thing that I do know that does absolutely work right now is passing it in the config file. So give me one second. Uh, where do I put that? Let's see container. Container conf. Um. So if you pass the environment here, I don't remember. Yeah, but that's for on where it's actually running, right? So that's the global configuration for all your jobs. Uh, this is the one for all of them, but you could definitely do a per, per user one if you feel like it. And um, 
if you really want to be able to customize it, that's what the Spank and the CLI filter plugins are for. If the user, if the site really wants to do something smart. So I'm working on getting all those to work together. Uh, the passing environment is there. It does work. You can do it here, which I don't know the format off of hand. Uh, but you yeah, just pass. Don't worry. I will, I will give it a try myself. I think maybe other people have questions as well. So no, no, these are definitely valid concerns. I mean, I'm more than happy to take all these questions because it helps me make sure I'm not missing something. <laughs> um, yes, the whole goal is that you can pass all the normal SERM uh, config. You can say number of nodes, GPUs per node, all that stuff. Um, and even if you want to do multiple nodes and stuff like that, um, as long as you make sure that the image is pushed out to all those nodes, it'll run. Or with a shared file system, you don't even have to worry about it. Yeah, maybe just to, to, to state my use case, let's say I have two two queues, one older queue, one newer queue. What I would usually do with Cyrus, Podman, whatever, I would configure the hook on the, the container hook, OCI hook, on the compute node to pick up the correct MPI libraries to be pushed into the container, right? So it's a oh. on a compute node configuration. So I, and I would need this compute node hooks to be triggered somehow. So I guess my this um, stage in allocation thing would need to reach out to the host, stage the container on the compute node instead of the login node so that you run the hooks and then it's independent on the configuration of the login node. It's just reaching out to the compute node, make sure that all the hooks for the compute node are run and then the container is maybe already present on the compute node. So I would stage the container on the compute node is what I'm saying, I guess. It's yes. On the um, my thought is that the users would run uh, Docker pod member there, but you can definitely run it on the compute node instead by using S batch. That's definitely an option, uh, open option. Um, okay. And your use case here of making sure the MPI hooks are called, I'm going to go and double check, but that's definitely something I want to get working if it doesn't work already. So yeah, thanks for pointing that one out to me. I got to make sure that works. Yeah, cool. No worries. The fun of development. <laughs> Uh, any other questions? I'm I'm very open. The to... oh yeah, Docker build does work. Um, well, in this case, Podman build will work, but uh, yeah, there's no reason that won't work, and it'll actually build on the compute node. So if you want to do you know GCC uh, M native, you know you can have that done as long as your compute nodes are heterogeneous, heterog or homogeneous, or you just be careful to make sure you compile on the right node. Um, I had a question based on your um, first diagram that you were talking through, similar to what Clemens was asking, I think. Uh, just a couple of things. When for a basic Docker run, I think I understand mm -hmm. your login node and uh, it's effectively then instructing the uh, compute node to do the business. What's the kind of flow if you want to run many jobs? How does that actually work? Do you just hit it many times? Or... Um, I would expect if you want to run a ton of jobs, you could just pass the environment request that give it an array. So, you know, use this image, but do an array of 10,000 jobs, something like that. So you don't have to pay the cost of the pushing stage in and out each time. And but that's the... definitely a possibility if you want to. Mm -hmm. The actual layers of the image and so forth that flows through the login node on your diagram is that right? Um, when stage out runs, or yeah, when stage in runs, sorry, stage out is when it uh, pulls it back. So stage in, uh, back going. So this is just a log for it. Uh, what stage it runs, it's running inside of the namespace provided by Podman or Docker. In this case, I just do a really simple rsync of pushing the final mounts out there. Uh, more advanced um, image slicing is definitely something I want to look into. But for now, it's not there. And how does that scale if you are running lots of things in parallel? Is that OK? Um, so it depends on what your file system is. If you have a shared file system, it's one rsync command, push it out to the file system. 
and then the file system handled the dirty details of that. I mean, you got Thunder, you heard problems, but that's nothing new. Um, and then in this case of the job, you just tell it, hey, I want X number of nodes for this, and Slurm will run it just like any other Slurm job. So I want a thousand nodes running this. Point it to this one image. I just pointed, uh, pushed out to the shared file system, and it'll run just like any other Slurm job. Right, I see. Um, if the user wants to run a thousand different different jobs, um, you have to pay the price of pushing out to the file system, and that's definitely something we got to work on later. But um, baby steps. <laughs> Makes sense. Cool. Okay. Well, that's that's great. I mean, we've got ten minutes left. Know, has anyone got any final questions? No. Nope. And uh, I'll point out here that when the stage in is called, it's inside the namespace, and so I just have it logging right now where the config is. So in this case, it's where Podman has the overlay FS, and then there's the config file. Um, Anybody who wants to go into advanced case of parsing the config file could go and grab each slice and only push those out as needed. And that's definitely a possibility, but it's just not something I'm implementing right now. Sorry, did, did we get the question in the chat already? Does Docker build work was asked by Timothy? Yeah, it works. Um, definitely, if it doesn't work, it'd be a bug, but uh, it will build on the compute node. That's the important part. So you have to make sure that you understand that, um, especially if you're calling compile or GCC or something fun like that, calling M native or something along those lines. Just need to make sure that the, where you execute the job, it matches to where you're going. You have to make sure that it matches where you build it to where you execute it so you don't have incompatibility, which in most cases, I assume a site would just set up a queue for it that would be shared between the two. Because we're taking over the S, um, the OSI runtime. Well, that's where Slurm gets uh, introduced. So Docker build calls that anyway. So it's just getting pushed out to that instead. Great. OK, well, thanks very much, Nate. Appreciate you taking the time. Really interesting stuff. Uh, I realized I skipped over the, at the beginning. We normally make sure that everyone's uh, put their names on the attendee list on the Google Doc and uh, jump straight into your presentation. Sorry, it's my fault. Um, and if there's any new joiners or new people who haven't been before, just stick your hands up and say hi. I can see a couple of names. Uh, oh, Ricardo's here with no microphone. Uh, yeah, we have one more session before KubeCon, so in two weeks' time, uh, which will be the nine. 18th of October, which is just before KubeCon. Um, I think Ricardo is saying the Gateway API possibly for the next session will confirm that and we'll stick out some notifications on Slack and email. Um, other than that, we'll also work on putting together a list of agenda items uh, following KubeCon because yeah. we've, uh, we've come to the end of it, I think. I'll be at KubeCon in Detroit. Um, anybody's welcome to talk to me, especially on Monday in the batch day. Yeah, I will be there too. So we can meet you at last face to face. That'd be cool. Um, is anyone else coming actually out of this group? Uh, yeah, I'll be there. This is Kevin. Kevin, cool. Um, and I'm um, I'm attending. My, that's my plan. If I can get a hotel in downtown Detroit, which is really hard. <laughs> Holy cow! It was so hard for me to get a hotel. <laughs> I had to go there like every hour and just check hotels.com until one just popped up because somebody canceled. Yeah, that's what I'm doing right now. <laughs> My colleague ended up on an Airbnb at, like in Midtown. He's getting some. He's going to get a tram every day, he reckons, or something. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. The thing that sucks is that if you could just go to on the other side of uh, the water in Canada, they have so many hotels available. <laughs> but you gotta, you have to have a car to pass through customs every day. I was looking at it. I was like, uh, can I pull this off? Our corporate booking system recommends hotels just based on radius and half of them yep. yeah. like a different price and in some place called Windsor. And I was like, yeah, sure, they're close. I'll have a look at that. <laughs> and it's only like one third of a mile, so you can totally yeah. walk, right? <laughs> oh, no, no, I actually oh. checked that. So the <laughs> Ambassador Bridge, they do not allow you to walk across. Right, exactly. Which yeah. sucks. Because I'm like, ah, I could walk this easily every day. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, It's uh, it was a bit of a... 
hit the foot gun. I'm just avoid <laughs> it. <laughs> Cool. Okay. All right. Well, I think that's it then. Thank you everyone for your time and uh, see you next time and then see some of you at QPAN as well. Yep. Feel free to hit me up with uh, questions or whatever comments on the Slack channel. I'm awesome. definitely open to hearing stuff like uh, Christian Singh with MPI. I'll make, I definitely got to make sure that works. And the intent of this is not to replace uh, Saris, but to get the container stuff as a, as a properly supported part of Slurm. And Cyrus can be bolted on top to do its extra magic. Good stuff. All right. Thank you, everyone. See you later.